With the Premier League season being so open, who really are contenders for the Premier League title this season? Last season, after nine games, Liverpool were six points clear at the top. This season, Tottenham are six points clear of eighth. So whose squad has what it takes? Will there be a surprise winner? And will it go down to the wire? As it makes most sense, we'll go through the teams in the order that they stand in the league table currently. As we say, leading the way is Mourinho's Tottenham on 20 points, which is 8 points more than what they had last season after 9 games. Winning their last 4 games with a combined score of 6-1, the only goal conceded in those 4 wins was a Tariq Lamptey goal for Brighton. Only conceding 9 goals in the league so far makes it the best defence in the league. So what is it that has really changed to get them into this position? It's quite clear that the players that they have in attack have been helping out a lot with how clinical and consistent they've been so far. Their top goal scorer in the Premier League is Son with 9 goals and 2 assists, followed by Harry Kane, 7 goals and 9 assists. 16 goal contributions in 9 league matches is incredible. Now as said on one of my Premier League roundup videos, you'd expect it to be the other way around, but with the way that Mourinho has the team set up, it means Kane is acting as a great playmaker. His strength plays a a big part in being able to hold up the ball like no other player that they have, meaning he can come deep for the ball and attempt to play passes to teammates running forward. In the match against Manchester City, Kane had 48 touches with 21 of them coming in his own half. Now this probably isn't too much of a surprise with how deep Tottenham were for the majority of the game, but what this allows him to do is receive the ball and lay off passes where they can run forward. He passed the most in this game to Hyung Min Son six times which made it their fourth highest pass combination. And some of the players that joined in the summer are playing a big part in why the team is performing so well, more so with Hoybjerg. He's become a vital part at the core of the team, completing the second most passes in the league with 619. 29 tackles won is the fourth most in the league, the most pressures attempted for Tottenham, 164, and then the most live ball touches in the league with 747, meaning his influence on the team in open play is huge. Everything is looking to go through him as they look to dominate the game. The concerning thing for Tottenham will be competing in the Europa League alongside their league games. We know how demanding that competition can be with so many games and playing them on a Thursday. We've seen teams in the past let this competition affect their form in the league. So far it's been good for Tottenham but it has to be a downside if they're really looking to go all the way. And after looking at the players doing well in the team, they're heavily reliant on Harry Kane and Hyung Min Son. With the heavy amount of games they are playing, it is a concern that these players will wear out or pick up injuries. It only takes one of them to be out and it could potentially have a big effect on their form. They have to be seen as a contender but do I really think they can win it? It's not too likely. I I see them as a team that can pull great results out the bag one week and then lose to a bottom half side the week after. Inconsistencies I think will show as time goes on, but they might be in the title conversation for a little while. Below them in second is Liverpool, also on 20 points, also with 21 goals scored, but 7 more goals conceded than Tottenham. Which is interesting because it was 7 goals that were let in at Villa Park in their only defeat so far this season. After that game people could tell that this wasn't the same Liverpool side. However, they still find themselves near the top and have improved their form since then. The recent 3-0 win against Leicester showed us why they are champions, winning against a side that are right up near the top of the table. Now at the moment, Liverpool are without a lot of the players you'd usually see in and around their first team, which is what makes the Leicester win more impressive. An interesting article I read in September and heard more about on Stephen Housen's channel recently discussed why Liverpool won't win the league because they physically, scientifically and morally cannot. It's a really intriguing piece that discusses the side effects of overdosing on caffeine to enhance performance, and with them this season may maybe not being able to do that as much may explain why they've looked worse at times. After two seasons of going at it full force, this season they may have to calm a little bit, especially with the congestion of fixtures this season. The quality is still there and of course they will be a contender for most of the season. If they do win, it's going to be by a smaller margin, that's for sure. What will be most interesting about Liverpool is can they keep consistent? Who will be able to take points from them because they are there for the taking this season, unlike previous years? We saw Aston Villa expose their defence, getting in behind Trent Alexander Arnold, Grealish and Watkins had a field day on that side of the pitch so other teams can replicate that. With more performances like the Leicester game, Liverpool will fancy their chances. They're set to play Tottenham on the 16th of December. That'll be a great game where we'll really see who's up for the challenge. Even with the doubts I have over them due to fitness issues and not being able to play like the way they have, they are still one of the stronger sides in this list that could actually win it. Third place we see Chelsea, two points behind Liverpool and Tottenham on 18, but a team that is looking better as the weeks go on. In comparison to 
last season at this point, they were on 17 points, so only one point better now than then. However, now there is probably more potential for this team to continue to do well in the league than there was previously. The early fixtures have favoured Chelsea, but of course they still have to get the job done and they have done quite convincingly in some games. In the next few weeks though, Chelsea are one to keep an eye on as their fixtures are getting tougher. After the 3-3 draw with Southampton, Chelsea have played 7 games in all competitions, scoring 16 and conceding 1. The 7 teams played were Sevilla, Manchester United, Krasnodar, Burnley, Wren, Sheffield United and Newcastle United. Now on paper you'd say the tougher games from these 7 are Sevilla and Manchester United, the two games that they didn't win with both being a 0-0 draw. And of course it's not always straightforward, they have to beat what they're up against and they have in the games you'd expect them to. It's clear that the defence has improved a lot and the signing of Mendy has made a big difference, but you'd expect a team like Chelsea with the squad that they have now to be beating Burnley, Sheffield United and Newcastle. That's why their next game against Tottenham will be one of the most interesting Premier League games to get a better understanding of where Chelsea really are right now. Before the end of the year, they also face Leeds, Everton, Wolves, Arsenal on Boxing Day and then Manchester City followed by Leicester to begin 2021. I think Chelsea should be seen as contenders in the Premier League with the squad that they have. I'm a big fan of Ziyech and I think he changes them a lot. They have good depth in quality, Chilwell has fit in well, Rhys James is looking better than ever, Kante and Kovacic give great balance. I believe our perception on Chelsea needs to change slightly. The squad has changed completely in the summer which already added to a team that had quality players. And the fixtures they have as we enter next year will show us if they can come together and play well as a team against better opposition. And taking up fourth is Leicester City, also on 18 points, winning six games the same as Tottenham and Liverpool. Another good start, just like last season, we saw them have a disappointing collapse before, but surely it can't happen in the same manner again. As said, Leicester have won the same amount of games as Liverpool and Tottenham, but on the other hand have lost three games with a disappointing 3-0 loss to West Ham, as well as a 1-0 loss to Aston Villa and then a 3-0 defeat to Liverpool. They're looking better in some games and show why they are fourth in the league, however there is inconsistencies in the way that they play. They've been playing with a few different formations and it's probably because they're missing many key players. Wilfred Ndidi gives them great defensive cover, one of the more underrated players in the Premier League in my opinion. Ricardo Pereira has been really impressive since his arrival at Leicester, but he's been out for a while now. And also, Timothy Castagne. We saw the impact he had at the start of this season, and when he's in the team, I think he makes a real difference. With a great goal scorer in Jamie Vardy in midfield with Tielemans, who has started this season better, and the defence which has been improved with the addition of Fofana, he looks to be a good purchase so far, it does make them a contender because the quality is there in the squad. And we've seen that ever since Rodgers started managing this team. Leicester have been the fourth best team in the Premier League since Brendan took charge on the 26th of February 2019. With other teams this season, like Liverpool and like Manchester City, not being as consistent, there is a slim chance that Leicester can compete for a longer amount of time. Now that's the top four covered. They are contenders for the title in their own way, with a few doubts over some of them. Away from them, who else could put a good run of form together and challenge near the top? You can't rule out Manchester City at the moment, at least. A really poor start and a huge contrast to the team we've seen in the past few seasons. But surely things will come together for them at some point. It's just whether when that comes, is it too late? Huge money has been spent on this side, so there's no good excuse for Pep if he can't get back to winning ways. The usual heavy reliance on Kevin De Bruyne, he's not been informed too much and maybe this is having a big effect on the team. The next four matches include three home matches against Burnley, Fulham and West Brom. Usually, you'd be looking at these games as 5-0 wins for Manchester City. It's what they've done in the past against teams of this quality. Alongside those, an away trip to Manchester United, which they haven't liked recently with Oli in charge. I'm sure they will get wins in those home games we mentioned, so they aren't going out of the conversation anytime soon. Southampton and Everton, let's put them under the same bracket of teams that look really impressive this season, but are they title contenders? I wouldn't say that. I believe they're teams this season that have started playing well, but you can see in some games that they can go missing and not be as good as they have been in other games. Southampton are unbeaten in seven, which is very impressive and since this time last year have gained 62 points in 34 games, the fourth best in that time period. A massive improvement by the players that have really adapted to Hasenhutl's style of play. I've got a full video on Southampton analysing how Hasenhutl has the team playing. Danny Ings out at the moment is a big blow but even with him in, I don't think they realistically challenge for first place. And the same with Everton, some top signings that have changed the way that they play, but we saw when some of them are out with the missing influence of Digne, Richarlison's attacking flexibility and the passing quality would really Rodriguez has, it leaves Everton struggling to get any sort of flow going with the lack of creativity and passing range. The only other team to mention would be Manchester United. With the squad of players that they have, we saw the run they put together at the end of last season. If they can get that form going again, then for sure they'll fly up the table with the inconsistencies other teams are showing. But will that happen? Rashford hasn't been fully fit for a while and is struggling. Martial hasn't hit 
goal-scoring form and Greenwood hasn't played too much yet. As we saw against West Brom, there was chances to be taken, but they just weren't finished off. We're only just seeing Alex Tellers come into the team and I think he'll make a bigger difference on the left than some people realise. He was good against Istanbul midweek, creating the most chances, getting four successful crosses from 11 attempted, adding something that United have been missing heavily. There is potential for this team to hit the ground running, but whether that really means to push for the title might be a stretch. They have back-to-back -back wins and Oli has a great record against the bigger sides, so with Man City just around the corner, it could be where things look a little better for United. Comment below who do you see as Premier League title contenders? I recommend you don't miss out on future videos. Subscribe to Route 1 and like the video if you did enjoy.